the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. After eight years, this Prime Minister has doubled our national debt and uh, created inflationary deficits. And what did we get for that money? There's more inflation, there's more poverty, and more people resorting to food banks. So where'd the money go? There have been, they went to contracts for the Prime Minister's cronies. There's been $15 billion more spent on those contracts. How many of those contracts went to McKinsey, the Right Honourable Prime Minister? The Mr. Speaker, seven years ago, we were elected as a government and we promised to invest in the middle class and all those working hard to join it. And that's precisely what we did with the Child Canada Child Benefit with supports for seniors and students. We managed to create millions of jobs uh, and get people out of poverty. Unfortunately, at every step of the way, the Conservatives opposed us. They voted against our investments in dental care, in rental supports, and in child care. We are going to continue investing. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I asked the Prime Minister how much McKinsey got. He said, well, it was all for the middle class. <laughs> he's always had difficulty <laughs> defining what the middle class is. Now we know his definition. It's his friends who make $1,500 an hour as high-priced consultants for his government over at McKenzie, where his personal friend, Dominic Barton, was the boss. We now know that he spent $15 billion plus per year on high-priced consultants while Canadians are eating at food banks, living in homeless shelters, and house prices have more than doubled. Again, how much did his government give Mackenzie? How much? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Mr. Uh, while the Leader of the Opposition snickers at the middle class, we will stay focused on supporting them. That's exactly what we did by bringing forward uh, supports for uh, rental, uh, rental uh, low-income renters, uh, supports uh, for families to send their kids uh, to the dentist. These are things that the Conservative Party voted against, just as they stood against the Canada Child Benefit, just as they stood against uh, help for seniors, just as they continued to stand against investments that have Canadian Canadians' backs before the pandemic, through the pandemic, and since the pandemic, we will continue to be there for Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. After eight years of this Prime Minister, mortgage payments have doubled up to $7,000 per month for an average house in Toronto. Rent prices have doubled up to $2,500 a month for an average place in Toronto. The number of people eating at food banks has gone up to 1.5 million, and crime is up 32 percent. So we wonder where all this half trillion dollars of inflationary debt actually went. Now we know. Liberal friends got the money. So I'm going to ask a third time. The well-connected insiders at McKinsey, how much did the Prime Minister give them? How much? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, over the past number of years, we've invested in supporting Canadians from coast to coast to coast to lift families out of poverty, uh, to help seniors make ends meet, uh, to invest in low-income renters, to help uh, people access dental care for their kids, uh, to deliver the kinds of things that have made not just Canadians better off, but our whole economy uh, work better. We're going to continue to step up in investing in Canadians while uh, Conservatives continue to push cuts and austerity uh, and uh, not being there for Canadians. We know that investing in Canadians is the best way to build a better future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister says that Canadians have never had it so good as they face 40-year highs in inflation, as food prices are up 12 percent year over year after he brought in a carbon tax on our farmers, as the cost of housing has more than doubled, as students are actually living in homeless shelter. We know why, though, he's so out of touch with these people after eight years, because the people he surrounds himself with like the high-priced consultants at McKinsey, are doing better than ever. So I'd like to ask him again. This company did money, did work of little or no value, according to his own public servants. How much did Canadians have to pay for that? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, on the con 
contrary, Canadians are struggling right now with high inflation caused by global crises, with interest rates, uh, with disruptions in the global supply chains, and that's why we've stepped up to support Canadians. Despite Conservative politicians voting against it, we've been able to keep investing in Canadians while maintaining the best balance sheet in the G7. We have the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio, the lowest deficit of all our G7 partners, and we've put that to work to support the Canadians who need it most. We will continue to be there for the middle class and people working hard to join it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, we finally got him to admit that Canadians are suffering, and it's after eight years of this Prime Minister. After eight years of this Prime Minister, we have 40-year highs in inflation. We have 32 percent increase in crime. We have the TTC transit system in downtown Toronto overtaken by crime. We have more people eating at food banks and living at homeless shelters after eight years of this Prime Minister. But not everybody's doing badly. His friends at McKinsey are rolling in cash. First they said it was 50 million. Now the government says it's over 100 million. We want to know the real number. Will the Prime Minister finally answer the question? How much did he give McKinsey? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, everyone in this House, from conversations with constituents, with conversations with people right across the country, know well that Canadians are facing tough times. What the difference is between the Conservative leader and myself is, instead of proposing real solutions, instead of uh, telling Canadians how they're going to help them and invest them, the Conservative leader stands up, crosses his arms, throws up his hands and says, everything is broken. Broken. Well, that's not what Canadians are living through, Mr. Speaker. Canadians stick up for each other. We're there for each other. We support each other through the tough times. That's exactly what we've been doing through this pandemic, through these past years. That's what we will continue to do, no matter how much... How much